Hi guys, it's Angie with Fun and Diverse Tie-Dye Lab. Today I'm going to make an ocean-inspired geode ice dye. I'm going to do this design on a tiered swing dress. And this is a dress which I purchased from Old Navy. It's 100% cotton and it has three different tiers. So I thought that a geo design would look really good on this dress because it'll be a little bit more free form. I'm finding an area on the dress where I'd like to start a geode, pinching that area, and then I'm going to slide my hand down to where I want the very outer rings of that geode to be. I'm going to start tying the outer rings first and tie rings going in toward the center of the geode. I'm using sinew, which is wax coated, and I'm pulling the sinew really tight until I feel the sinew kind of locked down on itself. And then I'm going to continue pulling on the sinew until I can't pull it anymore. So I can't get it any tighter than what I'm getting it. And I've had several people say, you know, I really tried to get my sinew tight, but I couldn't get it tight enough. I didn't have any definition lines. And I kind of had that problem too when I very first started tie dyeing and I wasn't using any kind of a sinew puller. I was just using the roll that the sinew comes on and trying to pull that way. I kept thinking I was getting the sinew nice and tight, but when I would unwrap the shirt, part of the time I'd have great lines and part of the time I wouldn't. So I ended up buying a sinew puller from Nikolai Savin and it made a world of difference. I could get consistent white lines, definition lines. It was so much easier. It's just easier to get a good grip on a sinew puller and be able to pull that sinew super tight. Another trick is make sure when you wrap sinew lines that you wrap them on top of each other. So when I wrap a sinew line, I wrap a couple wraps right on top of each other so that it has something to tighten down on. If you're off a little bit and your sinew lines aren't on top of one another, sometimes they don't tighten down quite as well that way either. If you're unsure if you got your sinew line really tight, you can wrap a couple more lines on top of the one that you just tightened down and repeat the process. The sinew puller I'm using in this video, I purchased from an Etsy shop called Boredom with Jen. I think she 3D prints them and she has several options available. So when I get down to the very end or the center rings of the geode, I'm going to push the fabric in a little bit. Try to keep it messy, rough it up, push that fabric in, make some strange little folds in the fabric because all of those weird little folds are going to make the center look way more interesting. I definitely don't want the center of my geodes to look like a bullseye. Bullseye designs are great, but that's not what I'm going for. I want it to look more natural, random, and like a geode. I'm going to speed the video up a little bit, but I'm going to continue this process all over the dress until I have the dress pretty much full of geodes. I personally like to make my geodes a little bit larger. I know that some people like to have really small geodes and a whole bunch of them on their shirt or their item that they're tie dyeing, but I like to make mine a little bit larger. I think sometimes when you add quite a few colors and a whole bunch of different lines on a shirt, it gets to be really busy. And I know some people really like that look and that's great. That is not particularly a look that appeals to me though. I like my geodes to be a little larger, especially on something like a dress that has this much fabric. I don't want it to just be overwhelming. You know, that's one of the great things about doing tie dye and being able to dye your own garments is you can do whatever you like. If you're somebody who likes to have a super busy item and you know, you want a bunch of lines and you want a bunch of different colors, you have the ability to do that. And if you're somebody who maybe wants something a little more minimalistic, you also have the ability to do that. There is truly no wrong way to tie dye and there aren't any rules. So just because one tie dyer likes to do a certain method doesn't mean that that has to be the way your items look. 
Okay, I'm going to leave you to watch me tie the rest of this dress. And if you'll notice, for part of these geodes, I'm splitting the center and adding more than one center. If you want to change the playback speed on this video, just go to the settings section on YouTube underneath the video, and you can change the playback speed to one that you're more comfortable with. You can either speed it up or slow it down.
Once I get the last geode tied, I'm going to take my sinew and make some sinew lines in between all the geodes. That's going to do a couple things. It's going to help kind of push all the geodes down, flatten them out a little bit, make them a little easier to dye. The other thing it's going to do is it's going to fill in some of that blank space with some definition lines. They're not going to be quite as defined as the rest of the geodes because the fabric is so thick and it's kind of bunched in there but it will give a little interest to that area and that area won't be so plain then after I have all of the lines tied I'm going to go ahead and place this dress aside and allow it to dry out completely I like to dye my items when they're totally dry and if you want a little bit more information about this I have a link down below this video in the description for my website and I have a blog out there where I discuss that topic. Basically, I get better color saturation when I apply the dye to a completely dry item like a geode. For thinner folds, it doesn't really matter. Those can be dyed while they're still damp, but thick folds like geodes and mandalas, I prefer to dye those when they're completely dry. Okay, so to dye my item, I've got a plastic tub or tote, and I have two plastic baskets, which I purchased from the Dollar Tree Dollar Store. I'm placing one upside down to keep the second basket, which I'm going to place on top, off the bottom of the container. I want to allow the muck to drain away from this dress. And by the way, all muck is, is it is a term used to describe the melting ice that's mixed with the dye. Dyeing in the muck is a tie-dye method, but I don't want to do that one with this dress. Since the dress is completely dry, I've taken some soda ash solution, which I put inside of a plastic spray bottle, and I'm going to lightly spray the top of the dress. This is going to help the dye to stick a little bit better to the top. I'm going to start by randomly applying Glacier Blue from Dharma Trading Company to a few of the geode areas. This color is pretty light, so it's kind of hard to see when I apply it to the shirt. So after applying the Glacier Blue, I started to apply Alpine Blue from Dharma. I realized that a lot of the dye was falling off the dress instead of staying on the dress. And so I decided to go ahead and just apply a layer of ice over the top of the dress and apply the dye over the top of the ice. If I wanted to go ahead and put the dye on first, I really would have been better off making myself an ice barrier. I thought I could do it this way, but it wasn't working out quite the way I expected it to. And you know, sometimes that happens. I use these containers a lot when I ice dye, but it just wasn't working for this dress. So I decided instead of maybe ending up with a dress I didn't like, I was just gonna quickly change the method and apply the dye over the top of the ice. 
So since I'm changing the method that I'm going to use, I'm going to move my dies around and put them in the order that I'm going to apply them to the top of the ice. I'm going to apply the die in stripes going across the ice and I thought it would be a little bit easier if I kind of started in the middle so that I could space my die out a little bit better. So I'm starting in the middle with Mystic Blue from Happy Cat Tie Dye. Then I'm going to continue applying the die in the order that I have the colors over on the left hand side. So let me go ahead and give those to you. I'm using Glacier Blue from Dharma. Teal Blue from Dye Spin, Alpine Blue from Dharma, Tropical Dream from Dharma, Mystic Blue from Happy Cat Tie Dye, Heads or Teals from Dharma, and that was a like a special muck dye, so that one is no longer available. A close one that you can maybe substitute would be Kingfisher Blue. Then the last two colors I'm using are Jade Green and Brilliant Blue from Dharma. I know I kind of jumped around with the way I applied them to the ice. I did that so that I could space them out a little bit easier, but I applied them in the order that they are over on the left hand side and then I just read off to you. Now I'm going to add a little bit of additional soda ash over the top and place this container aside and allow the ice to melt. After the ice melted, it looked like I had really good color saturation. So I just went ahead and laid a lid over the top of this container and placed the dress outside to allow it to process in the heat. I think it was over about 100 degrees. So I left the dress outside for about 12 to 14 hours. And then I took it in and started rinsing it in my utility sink. I started rinsing in cold water to rinse out the soda ash. Then I untied the dress and warmed the water up to hot and continued rinsing in hot water to rinse out any of the excess dye that didn't bond with the fabric. Instead of continuing to rinse for a long time, I went ahead and ran some really hot water in my utility sink, added a little bit of Blue Dawn dish detergent to the water, and just allowed the dress to soak. I kept changing out the water until the water was remaining almost clear. Then I put the dress along with some Dharma's professional textile detergent into my washing machine and I washed it using a hot water cycle. Okay, so I've washed and dried the dress and let's see what it looks like. Okay, so what do you guys think? I have photographed it both flat because I think because there's so much fabric and so much pleating, it's a little easier to see the design when it's flat, but I've also photographed it on the mannequin. And I think this dress is gorgeous. I think it is so pretty. I think that the colors are just so soothing and calm. Totally reminds me of an ocean. The mystic blue kind of has the color splits that are a little bit olivey, look almost like sand. And then I like that little pop from the brilliant blue of the purplish pink color. It's in the center of a couple of the geodes. I think that looks really cool too. I didn't intend for it to be this way, but the dress is kind of lighter on the top and the darker colors tend to be toward the bottom. I think that's kind of a neat effect. It was totally unintentional, but I think it adds to the effect. And I love the fact that the centers of the geodes are all very interesting. You know, there's a lot of weird little twists in there. Some of them have more than one center. I just think it looks really cool. And because I'd already applied Glacier Blue to some of the sections on the geodes, I do have a lot of that color showing up. And that's okay with me because in general, that tends to be a lighter color, which can get lost very easily, but it shows up on this dress. And I really like that. It's blended with some of the other colors and I think it looks really pretty. So overall, I really love this dress. I love the geodes. I love the colors. I love the ocean vibe. And you know, if tie dyeing a dress is maybe not your thing, you can totally use this design and these colors on a t-shirt on anything else you want to dye. So don't feel like just because I did a dress with it that you can't use this design or these colors unless you want to do a dress. But I sure would love to know what you guys think about it please drop me some comments down below and let me know. And if you've enjoyed watching the video, I sure would appreciate it if you would like it and if you'd subscribe to my YouTube channel. 
If you'll hit the bell, you'll receive a notification whenever I upload a new video. Thank you all for watching, and I hope you have a great day. Thank you.